What's up, guys? We are back with another Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats review, taking a look at a brand new wave of figures that is, well, new, but it's also familiar at the same time, because we are taking a look at the LJN toy variant figures. So there's a handful of figures that don't look anything like their cartoon counterparts in many ways, and Super 7 has started going down the road of giving us some of those. So we've got our cartoon variations, and now we're going to get some toy variations as well. We are, of course, starting with lion -O, and these guys still come in the familiar Ultimate style packaging, and it's the same stuff that we've been getting. Uh, so you've got your, your Thundercats logo on the front, the black slipcover, and the Thundercats logo on the back. What I do really like, though, of course, is that this packaging was already very LJN-inspired to begin with. So you've got your figure there in the big one, window. You've got that LJN white burst back there, which is how those backer cards were in the vintage line, the Thundercats logo, and then you've got some artwork of Lino on the back, as well as a bio for our Lord of the Thundercats. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Ultimates LJN toy variant Lino. I've really been looking forward to these because I do have a soft spot for the vintage toys. I didn't even have them all as a kid, and I, I still don't have them all, and I, I don't plan on ever really going back to get the stuff that I didn't get, but they are a part of my childhood. Undoubtedly, these toys are a part of my childhood. I still have the ones that I had as a kid, and they are just beat to hell. But it's cool to be able to get something like this. I know that these were sort of a surprise for folks because, well, if anything, I thought they were probably going to be convention exclusives. Uh, and they are, in fact, mainline releases. So it is kind of surprising that we got a full wave of these, but it's also one of those figures that maybe you don't necessarily have to have either. Like, it's not it's not important if you just want more animation-style stuff. So let's see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. He's going to be familiar territory if you have any of the more recent Thundercat stuff, specifically Mirror lion -O, Frozen lion -O. We do have a new head here, which I am very happy with, because it's actually got some really solid range. It looks up really good. Looks down a decent bit. You do have some slight tilt. Hand full rotation. Arms out at the shoulders. Rotate. You've got your bicep swivel. It's a Motu Classic style body, basically. Single jointed elbows. You've got vertical hinges on the wrists in the box. And then, of course, rotation. Ab crunch. Waist swivel. Legs out. They kick forward. Kick backward slightly. Got your thigh twist up there. Single jointed knee. We've got our boot cut down here. And then you've got rocker, you've got hinges, normal stuff. So, I mean, if you've messed with anything in this line, you know exactly what to expect. And especially if you mess with those two recent Lion-O variants, uh, you know what to expect also. So, of course, he is pinless. And in, in every way, he feels much more rigid than other figures. Not in a bad way, like not in a I'm going to break if you look at me wrong way. Just everything feels nice and tight and how it's supposed to be. I've had zero issues with anything stuck. Nothing has required heat. He moved really, really nicely right out of the box. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, the design of this guy, I feel like there is kind of two ways to approach this one because he is not 100% a reinterpretation of the vintage figure. Uh, there are certain things that I, I'm going to you know, kind of mention that I would have liked to have seen, but this guy's really just meant to be a repaint, you know, a recolor of existing parts, for the most part anyway. And I think that in many ways, they hit all the high marks here in that regard. And most of that comes down to the colors. The orange looks fantastic. It's very consistent throughout, even the painted versus the, versus the molded plastic. The blue, we've got that sort of baby blue powder blue going on here, which is definitely really nice. Everything's really saturated, nice and bright and vibrant. One thing that I really like in particular all the paints, super clean, super crisp, uh, no real issues to speak of there. And I do really like this head sculpt, and I like in particular this shock of hair, because of course, you know, that's one of the little signature things of the vintage figure, is that specific uh, sort of flowing hair. It's not as much hair as we have on the regular Lion-O figures, so of course that helps with some of the articulation. But the paint is really close also. And the big thing is, is this thing looks like a toy. Like, it looks like a toy that you're supposed to play with, not just, you know, an action figure for someone pushing 40. So there's a lot of stuff here that I do really, really enjoy. I mean, it very much immediately harkens back LJ and Lion-O. That's what I think of. That's, that's what comes to mind. There are a few things, however, that, of course, are not the same. One of them seems to be a legitimate error in some ways, and that the big thing for me is the the belt buckle, the logo. It's way, way, way too good on this figure. Very clean, very accurate, very crisp in that detail. And in the render, it looked closer to this 
janky mess. So I was really hoping that it was going to be that really bad looking logo, and it's not. Of course, there are a few other things here that we just aren't going to get on this figure. So it's mostly a repaint. So that means we're not getting new parts. You know, we should have gotten new boots because he has those sort of like bubbles on the boots. The torso ideally would have been a new torso because he has different uh, straps on his shoulders and the harness, the armor itself is just structured differently. Like some of the pecs are actually peeking through on the vintage LJN figure. The head, I think for the most part is pretty spot on. I think they did a pretty solid job there. And then of course, you know, the big thing with the LJN figures is they had quote unquote battlematic action. You had the lever and the arms moved. And of course they had light up features. So there was that doodad that you plugged into the back and it would make them light up so we don't get any of that kind of stuff so there's no like fake lever even i would have it would have been cool to see a fake lever if we could uh, but you know you're not gonna get an action feature on this and i'm kind of okay with that because it's one of those things that i would use it once or twice and then i'd probably never do it again what i really would have liked to have seen in conjunction with the idea of the led or not led but just the light feature is even if they were going to give us that light feature that the vintage figure had give us some sort of light piping on this head to make it work or to make them glow in the dark at the very least just to do something give us that little nod otherwise i mean there are a handful of nitpicky things that i've got that aren't exactly you know 100 percent interpretation here but for a repaint that very much is meant to mimic this figure i really think they nailed the look on this lion -O. Now, as far as accessories goes, we get a handful of things, but not a lot with this figure. And that's going to be one of the areas of contention, I'm sure, because this is the same price as the regular Ultimates, but you arguably get a lot less stuff. Of course, on the flip side, it's supposed to mimic the vintage figure. So should he really be coming with stuff that the vintage figure didn't come with? I guess that's, you know, your mileage may vary on that kind of thing. We do get some stuff, of course, that the figure didn't come with. Uh, we get some extra hands to start with. Vertical gripping hands on him in the box. Uh, you get a set of lateral gripping, and you get a set of the style posy clawing style hands. No fists on him, though. I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, we do get an extra head sculpt with a sort of snarling, grimacing expression. Still very similar in composition to this head. Same hair sculpt and everything, uh, but it does look good. Similar to what they've done with other lion figures, you know, we get a, a sort of a battle head sculpt versus uh, just a stoic one. And then we get the signature accessory. So I'm going to pop this hand off and we're going to put on this very LJN inspired uh, claw shield. So it takes the place of a hand and you've got your big red claw shield there, which I do really like this. I mean, I like this design. I think it works pretty well. And just like I said, you know, this guy looks like a toy. This looks like a toy claw shield. So I'm really happy with the sculpt on this. What I don't like though, is that this is a reused crotch piece. It has the peg on it that we see with the regular claw shields on the more animation style lionos. There's no way to attach that though. So I'm not sure why this is still here. Uh, if you know, it's, it's almost like they should have put the hole in the claw shield to allow it to be connected regardless of what the vintage figure did, because I don't like having that there if there's no way to use it. And then we do get the vintage style sort of omens. And this looks terrific. The, uh, Cat's logo on there looks not perfect, which is exactly how the LJN was. It wasn't as terrible as the belt buckle, uh, but it wasn't perfect. But the colors look great. The silver's nice and bright and vibrant. And then you've got all that piping uh, around the cat's eye and just the red. I mean, the goofy color scheme compared to what it's supposed to look like, you know, just for sake of comparison. You know, it's a very different look when it comes to sculpt and style and of course the colors. So I do really like this sword. Now I do think that there was room to maybe include a few other things with this figure because the vintage figure in some cases, not all, uh, came with a mini snarf that wasn't articulated. That would have been a really cool pack in or even to take things and maybe a step further in typical fashion, something like super seven would have often done the claw shield and his hair had color variations. There was an orange one, a maroon one, and then, you know, you had an orange claw shield. I think it would have been cool to maybe get, you know, even if it's just a straight repaint in the same box, it's like something Super 7 would have often done in the past, and, you know, they didn't do it here. I would have really liked to have seen one of those orange hair uh, head sculpts or the orange claw shield. Again, kind of nitpicky stuff when I'm going, I guess, kind of hard on making it look as LJN as possible. But those are a few things that I would have liked to have seen. I do like what we got, though. I really like the claw shield, despite the peg thing. And I do really, really like this sword. 
So yeah, overall, I am really happy with this guy. You know, don't get me wrong, I do have a lot of little nitpicky gripes with the vintage accuracy, but I really like this Lino. I think it's a lot of fun, and again, it looks like a toy. Like, there's a lot of toy here. Uh, he definitely has some things that I wish were closer to the vintage. You know, I wish that they had tooled up a new torso that looked more vintagey. I wish he had all that stuff on the back. I wish the, the belt was that janky logo. The logo is probably the big thing for me. I know it's unrealistic to expect a fully new torso for just a color variant, but he looks great otherwise. The head looks fantastic. The hair looks good. The colors are great. They pop. They really, really pop. He comes with some solid accessories. What they gave him is really nice. I really like the claw shield. I really like the sword. I wish the claw shield, of course, could fit on the belt, but it's a cool looking claw shield. The only thing beyond that is that I wish he had a few more things, you know, maybe that orange hair, maybe the orange claw shield, or even the little light doodad, even if it didn't do anything. I know it would be just a fun little inclusion otherwise. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates LJN toy variant Lionel. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time. <laughs>